I really want to have my mind changed about this run because it does get so much love. But for some reason, it's never really grabbed me the same way that these three sort of Jamaican rums have done. And we're talking like rum circa 20 pounds in the UK. So today, I'm gonna to give this another go and I'm gonna see whether it does change my mind. And what I've got coming up, I've got, I'm gonna be doing a little side-by-side -side tasting, but I've also got a little blind daiquiri tasting coming up. So a couple of things before we get started with this. We are talking rums, circa 20 pounds in the UK. And right at this minute, at the time of shooting, that's also virtually 20 euros and 20 dollars. You know, we're, we ain't too far off uh, the beaten track at the moment. So that's the price point. There's a disclaimer here as well, because it depends what kind of customer you are. Because in the UK, if you're a consumer, just a general consumer, this will be slightly more expensive uh, to you, maybe 25, 26 pounds. But in the trade, it's actually not too much over the 20 pounds. So it does kind of play in this. And uh, this is definitely available in supermarkets. It's very well known out there. And um, we've got Kingston 62, which is kind of Appleton's uh, white rum, a kind of rebranded, uh, I forget what it was used to be called now, but someone will get in the comments and I'll flash it up on screen. Uh, but it used to, it was like Appleton White or whatever the hell it was. We've got Rum Bar, which is Worthy Park, uh, and the Boutique Rum Company is a blend. It's part of Master of Malt, sort of. It's too complicated to get into in this video, but it's essentially a, ja a Jamaican rum uh, with Martinique in there as well. So it's a bit, a bit of a blend, slightly different, perhaps not a fair comparison, but for me, for what I do, it is playing in this ballpark. Now, uh, why do I want to have my mind changed? It's because this is a permanent stock for me. With my other sort of business, when I do cocktail masterclasses and that sort of stuff, this is always there. Purely because, all right, the way I do my masterclasses, I do talk about the original mojitos with Bacardi and um, uh, Havana three-year-old, I have that. But then I go into other white rums like when I do masterclasses, I take 20 different rums with me, including some flavoured stuff as well. But I kind of want to get people, you know, I want to educate people as well to sort of say, look, just in, even in the white rum category, you know, your Barbados rum is going to taste very different to your Jamaican rum, which is going to taste very different to your Cuban and Puerto Rican. So this is always there. And this is a firm favourite. People have a smell, they have a little sip, and they're like, oh, I'm going to use that. So I do go through quite a lot of it. But as I say, when I've got these rums, and I don't use these rums because people just generally won't recognise them because they're not supermarket available in supermarkets. Dead man's fingers would be. I don't carry that. But um, in me, in my world, this is what this is up against. And up until now, it hasn't really competed. Let's just give you the brand spiel. Uh, it's a vibrant celebration of Jamaica and its influence on the world. 100% Jamaican white rum with flavours of mango, pimento and fresh time uh, for that 100% uh, Jamaican flavour. I don't know too much about Jamaican kind of heritage and all that sort of stuff but i'm intrigued by that fresh thyme and pimento pimento yeah God, because of pimento dram and that sort of stuff uh, mango's kind of gone over my head for a truly authentic jamaican i'm as i would assume though that being the climate out that way you know the the fresh tropical fruit it just is pales into insignificance uh, to what we have here or is that the other way around you know Ours pales into insignificance to what they do. I could just imagine all kinds of uh, tropical fruit, my absolute paradise out in Jamaica, in the Caribbean and all that sort of stuff. But mango, I just, I just for some reason, pineapple, coconut, that sort of stuff, banana. Uh, never really contemplated mango. Put more mango, more kind of India, Indonesia, Philippines, that sort of neck of the wood, Asia. Um, so yeah, that was, that was kind of got me on there. Uh, and it's a little bit on the label, which I kind of knew, um, but I hadn't really paid attention to. It kind of, it pays homage to like a record and that comes up to sort of like a, for you kids those black vinyl things um that kind of pays homage to this next bit produced and co-founded with musical pioneer kano which i didn't know uh, this rum is five years in the making born from memories smells and flavors that ref reflect his jamaican roots and profound impact on jamaican culture on london and the world now when we get onto the nosing tasting and all that the one reason why this does so well i think in my masterclass is when you smell it it's unmistakable to what they say. Mango, the mango really jumps off this. But I've also got their uh, uh, official aroma notes on here. Bright, zesty tropical uh, fruits with a hint of lemongrass, pineapple and white pepper. An unmistakable yet subtle note of Jamaican pot still rum. So, and this is what gets me. Is it unmistakable Jamaican pot still rum? In that sense, no, I don't think it is. Because to me, 
when you taste and smell those two, they are unmistakable Jamaican pot still rums. Um, so this doesn't get close, but this goes in a very different direction because of that tropical nose. I mean, the aroma for me, uh, mango, first off, absolute mango. I don't get the lemongrass. But I also get a slight berry vibe off this, which is present in some uh, Jamaican rums. Uh, sort of, I don't think strawberry, I think more raspberry. But I certainly don't really get the sort of banana-y, pineapple-y funk vibe off it. There's absolutely no aroma of funk at all on here for me. But let's not mistake one thing here. This smells really, really good. And that mango is pulling me in straight away. I really want to dive into this. So, tasting. Um, 40 percenter. Definitely berry. The first thing that hits me is berry. Um potentially raspberry and strawberry but more kind of raspberry than anything else um there is this lovely creaminess to it um it's definitely unique white rum uh, and for 20 quid it's it's a bargain it's absolute bargain because it is quality you know it, when my master classes when they bang it out in mojitos or for some of them they do daiquiris and stuff i 100 percent why get why it's so popular and why people smell it and go, I want that, 100%, because it is just non-offensive. For 20 quid, you know, when you're putting Bacardi in this realm as well, that's 14, 15 quid in the UK, there is absolutely no comparison. You're going to pick this every single day of the week because it is just, in that sense, delicious. There's a little sort of spicy tingle in there. It doesn't taste like a watery 40%, like some other rums that I've, I've got behind here. This has got a nice little punch to it. I genuinely can't fault that as a rum. And that's why, you know, that's why I carry it for my cocktail masterclasses. My head, though, and this is where the conflict is for me, is because while that's a decent, really good white rum, I've got other decent, really good white rums that I equally enjoy. So I kind of want a Jamaican sort of white rum. And I don't really get Jamaican from that like I do these. So then in my head, it automatically defaults to just another white rum. And then when I go to daiquiris and things like that, I automatically, because I love the whole uh, column still kind of vibe, I go uh, I go to the Cuban sort of stuff. I go to my car to uh, my Ron Cube, I sometimes to Santiago. But I also do love, I think it's right there, the Chairman's Reserve, you know, and the plantation. That's sort of, all right, probably more Chairman's Reserve now. It's got a bit of column still in there. And I think they're better as white rums than what this is. But if I want a Jamaican white rum, I don't go for that. I go for I, put, I go for these two. Now I realise I'm in a unique position here where I've got a lot of white unaged rum. Uh, and if you're just one of these people that just reliant on the supermarket in the UK, or you're on a budget, twenty pounds is your hard limit for a white rum. That that is really really good juice for that money. Really, really good juice. But I just kind of want to get across where my head is and where it fits in. It fits in perfectly with the Cocktail Masterclass kind of vibe. It just doesn't fit in perfectly with what else I've got behind me. So look, how does it compare with these just in a neat tasting? There is no right answer here. To compare to Kingston 62, Kingston, I love Appleton rums. Kingston 62 is probably the weak link for me in their range, but there again, it's not it's not supposed to be in that like 12 year old, the eight year old range or anything like that. I would much prefer that over the Appleton signature. That does more for me than that. I do get the inherent sort of Appleton vibe from that. But again, I don't get funky Jamaican from this. And that's where my head is. But And this is the thing we chat about over and over again. Appleton is the biggest selling rum coming out of Jamaica by a long, long way. Is that what we should think of as Jamaican rum? Because it outsells everything, is that what we think Jamaican rum is? Sh by sheer def definition, because of popularity. However, for me, when I think of Jamaican rum, I think these two, because this has got the funk. It has got the esters. It's got that banana-y coconut vibe to it. It's got, it's got that unmistakable Jamaican, it's born into us from Ray and Nephew, let's be brutally honest. 
but it's got that unmistakable vibe to it. And I really do love rum bar. And it's virtually identical prices. We're talking like pennies difference, absolute pennies. Whereas the, the Boutique Rum Company, I get this out in cocktail tests a lot uh, because it has got that sort of split uh, Martinique kind of vibe, that split agricole vibe in there. And again, this just plays, just does wonders in cocktails. It really does. But I know full well, when I do masterclasses, I'm going to get that amount, the amount, uh, and it's just going to be lost on them. They're just going to have people going away, you know, there's just going to be absolutely, well, I don't know what, I can't remember what they are, unless they take photos, that's not going to be memorable. The taste might be, but the bottles won't be. Whereas this, 100% is, because people see it week in, week out, in the supermarkets, on the shelves, Duppy is a well-known brand in the UK. It isn't what I'd compare to these, but it is delicious. So daiquiri time. Uh, I, as you see, I made them up. I kept them in. They've been in the fridge a long time. I put a couple of ice cubes in there just to sort of maintain it because um, I didn't want to make them now. I just wanted to quickly go into it filming. Uh, number one, number two, number three, number four. Now, uh, unmistakably, that hands down has to be the rum bar because of that Jamaican vibe. I'm not a huge fan of that in a daiquiri. I do like lighter, as I've said, time and time again, lighter column still um, sort of daiquiris. But I do like, occasionally like these little quirky twists coming in there. Um, I, I've got a rough idea uh, that that one is, um, I've got a rough idea that that's that one. I don't really, but I'm not 100% sold on that. That for me is the least favourite. That's the one that does not much to me at all. It's, it's decent. I drink it. Um, bear in mind, these are all roughly 20 quid. You know, if I got served that, as a if, if a pub or a bar or something is carrying that for their daiquiri rum, I'm going to drink that. I am. It's decent. But it just doesn't quite cut it off there. So they are in that order. First place, second th place, third place, fourth place. Um, I, I do prefer this over that because it is sort of lighter and does give me something more. There, there is that sort of Jamaican fruit coming from there. That has to be the rum bar. Has to be. Um, but this one, yeah. So uh, let's go for this. So in, in, in last place, what have we got? We've got number four. Um, yeah, Kingston. I don't know where you can sort of see that without me supporting. But has got two numbers on there. But number four is the base of that one. So yes, that's the one I'm putting in, um, in fourth place there. This one, what have we got? We've got number three. Yeah, rum bar. So... It's between these two then. Second place, first place. What are we? What have we got here? Number one. Number one, if you can sort of see that. Duppy. It's decent. You know, it is. I quite like it, to be fair. Uh, but this one, you know, number two. There we go. It's just something about this. This was really underrated. Uh, the Boutique Rum Company. Really underrated by me for a long, long time. But I really have grown on this. This is lovely. To sum up, the Duppy share... Um, What's it called? It's not a duppy. It's duppy white. To sum up, I cannot fault this rum for the price. Absolutely not. And if you're just sort of tied to supermarkets and that sort of stuff and you see this, um, far superior to Bacardi, to maybe even Havana. But I was, I was actually, actually going to say like Dead Man's Fingers white in the UK. For me, far superior. It's a great, great white rum. My issue with it if someone says to me, I want sort of Jamaican, Jamaican vibes in that, I automatically go those two. And never that. If I kind of judge that in its own merits as a white rum without the whole Jamaican thing behind it, is that a good white rum? Yes. I really like that as a white rum. Really, really like that quite happily drink it neat. I think that's going to be amazing with your highballs, your vodka, your vodka, your rum and cokes, your perhaps not ginger ales, but your the Stratford sodas, those sort of things. Um, daiquiris, you know, absolutely fat. But my head is classifying it as a Jamaican rum. No, I, th I go there. Just don't think about it. Think about it as a white rum, stock it, you won't go far wrong.